time to thank you for uh, St. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Those are present. Uh, don't stand with me for the reading, the reverencing of the Word of God. Luke 13, verses 1 through 5. Hear God's Word. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus asked and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Verse 3, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or uh, those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Look what Jesus says. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. May be seated in the presence of God. Nay, on tag this text uh, from which I believe we can draw strength from simply this subject. It should have been me. It should have been uh, me. Not only are we facing dire times in our city, but we're facing dire and dreadful times in our country as well as 
as our world. Uh, we are reaching milestones with regard to this current disease that our country is facing. And the numbers are staggering uh, in excess of 50,000 people have died in the United States with regard to this current pandemic. And, and as we face tomorrow, as we face <coughs> the next few weeks, uh, steps are being taken to reopen our country. Steps are being taken to reopen our economy. And you hear all types of advice with regard to how we are to proceed. And, and while the advice is given, uh, because it varies from city to city and state uh, to state, one of the things that is also occurring with the advice that's being given is uh, the blame game. Uh, you're finding that people all over the country are blaming folk for the current times that we are facing. And I, I think it's dangerous to play the blame game. Certainly our country could have responded sooner. Certainly uh, we could have taken steps to prevent the loss of life on the scale that it's reached in our country. But we have to be careful how we point fingers. And, and, and because of this situation and, and the tendency of mankind to want to play the blame game, I, I believe before we start looking at folk outside of ourselves, we should take this opportunity to look at ourselves first. Huh? I, I often ask myself, because, because this pandemic is it, taking all types of people. It's taking rich people, poor people, young people, old people. It's taking folk with good credit. It's taking folk with bad credit. It's taking folk with insurance. It's taking folk that don't, that doesn't have insurance. It's taking folk that are employed. It's taking folk that don't have a job. And so this, this disease is not selective in who it chooses. It's, it, it, and I'm led to believe some good folk are dying and and some bad folk are, are, are dying. And, 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 and so uh, when situations like this occur, we have a tendency to ask ourselves, why does bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to, I'm paying my tithes. I'm coming to church. I'm working in ministry. I'm not lazy. I get up and go to work every day. But yet trouble still finds me. Trouble still every now and then lands at my landscape. And I'm led to ask a question. I think I'm a pretty good person. Why does trouble every now and then stop at my house. I discovered the reason why God allows good, bad things to happen to good people is so that everybody can stop and pause and look at their own lives and see where they are with regard to the kingdom. You can get so busy living your life. You can get so busy rearing your children. You can get so busy singing about your parents that are seniors now that you forget about yourself and your spiritual condition. And sometimes God allows a bad thing to happen to a good person so you will stop and pause and take self-examination. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when, you, when you pause and you start looking internally, you can't help but come up with the conclusion that, that I 
come up with. When something, when it befalls somebody's lot to have something negative happen to them and I do the self-examination on myself, I can't help, help but come to this one conclusion that it should have been me. It should have been me that should be struggling. It should be me that uh, should be sick. It should be me that's on a deathbed. But it ain't because I'm smart. It's not because I love the Lord more than you. It's because God decided to smile on me. He doesn't love me more than he loves you. But for some reason, God has allowed my days to roll on just a while longer. And so, yes, yes, it should have been me. And, and if you can't draw that conclusion, I got some steps today to aid you in that, in, that, in that frame of mind, for you to develop that frame of mind, for you to, to, to have that sense of awareness that, that it's God's grace that's smiling on you. And we should not take God's grace for granted. And when we find ourselves uh, taking God's grace for granted, there are steps that we can take to get ourselves back in the right position. And so, so as we look at this text, we find that some that Jesus found himself uh, in the presence of people like you and me. And they, they kind of wanted to know why do bad things happen to good people? And so they started bringing up scenarios. And, and so we, we first thing we want to highlight about the text is desired assertions. There were, there were things that they were huh, wanting to know with regard to why do bad things happen to good people and they were making, had drawn some conclusions of their own. There were some assertions that they were desiring to present before Jesus. It's right there in verse 1 of the text. It says, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood pallet had mingled with their sacrifices. They, they assert a scenario that had took place in Jerusalem. There was probably an, an uprising that took place uh, near the temple where the Jews uh, would worship and probably got chaotic and Pilate sent some of the guards to handle the uprising that was taking place near the temple and and, and while things were being settled, while, while Pilate's guards were trying to get a handle on things, some of the Galileans were killed uh, during the peacemaking endeavor. And, 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 and because of, of the blood being spilt on that occasion, some of the blood of the Galileans well, uh, became mixed with the blood of the sacrifices. And it was a sacrilege. It was uh, a dastardly deed played by uh, that dastardly character, uh, Pilate, Pontius uh, Pilate. Uh, and 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 this this notion that is being asserted that these Galileans must have done something wrong for Pilate to have reacted that way. Look look at the assertion that that is being put before Christ. Uh, they're acting like we do. They the reason why something bad happened to the Galileans is because. Uh, they were doing something wrong. They, they must got a secret life. They got some things that are going on behind the scenes that nobody uh, knows about. And that's why God is judging them publicly. We do the same thing. 
Somebody loses their car. Somebody loses their home. And we automatically want to assert that they got some negative and foul things going on in their life for negative things to happen. But look at the reply of Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? Jesus tells them, See, you, you think they bad. You think, you think they have a negative life. You think they're, they go to church in, on Sunday, but they're really sinners Monday through Saturday. And God is finding them out. God is going to blow them up like we blow folk up on Facebook. Uh, God is going to blow them up. But look at what Jesus says. He says, I tell you, Nate. He said, I tell you, no. But except ye repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. I love, I love Jesus' reply to their desired assertion because what we see is Jesus disproving huh, their assumptions. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. They bring up the scenario of the slain Galileans uh, at the hand of Pontius Pilate, but Jesus steps on the gas and he takes it just a little bit further. He said, look what he says in verse 4. What about the 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them? Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Ha! Huh? Look what Jesus does. He, he, he puts the pedal to the metal and he raises up his own scenario. See, in Siloam, that, that, that was a tower that fell. That, uh, maybe it was bad engineering. Maybe it was an earthquake. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it, been, maybe it was sabotage, but a tower fell in Siloam and 18 folk uh, were killed because this tower fell. And Jesus raises up this scenario, he said, do you think because these 18 folk lost their lives because that tower fell, that they were sinners above any other sinners, that they were worse than anybody else? Is that the reason why you believe that they lost their lives? Jesus asked the question and then he answers his own question. Look at verse 5. He says, I tell you no, but except Ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Not only is Jesus disproving their assumptions, but he's disproving our assumptions. We got to put, put away that, that mentality of thinking folk have done something bad because they're finding themselves in a negative situation. But, and, and I tell you, yeah, I made some bad decisions that have caused negative things to happen uh, to me. But, but there are times negative things that, that have, happened, have happened to me that I didn't do anything wrong. That I just showed up. I, I just got up that morning brushing my teeth, combing my hair, washing my face, putting gas in my car, and trouble just happened to show up. And all I'm trying to tell you, sisters and brothers, that you got the wrong assumption about folk that uh, with regard to their lives, when you think that the only time negative things happen to folk is when they got negative things going wrong in their life. God told them no, and he's telling you no as well. You don't have to do nothing in 2020 to lose your car. You don't have to uh, do anything in 2020 to lose your home. That's right. You don't have to do anything wrong in 2020 to lose your job. 26 million folk have filed for unemployment and they haven't done anything wrong. All I'm trying to tell you is that God smiles on the just as well as the unjust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> deals with their desired assertions. He disproves their 
assumptions. But then finally, I'm going to close this morning. It's, it's for a reason. Why? Why does God allow bad things happen, happen to good people? Mm. Why? Why does he do it? Why does he allow it? Well, I close with this. Come on, come I believe it's that so we can take deliberate action. Yeah, we've seen desired assertions. We see that Jesus disproved assumptions. And we close with our response is to take deliberate action. Notice that with both Jesus' reply, he not only tells them no, they were thinking wrong, but he tells them what they ought to be thinking about. He says, on two occasions, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I believe, sisters and brothers, that Jesus is true response to his audience, his reply to their question, why do bad things happen to good people? I believe Jesus' reply simply is this, so you can stop down and reevaluate your spiritual condition. He says, you're, you're overwhelmed by the tragedy. Huh? But, but he says, it, it could be worse. Yeah. It could be you. And when you, when you take your life and you put it up against others' lives, mm -hmm. huh? sometimes you come up with the notion not only that it could have been me, mm -hmm. you come up with the rationale that it should have been me. Yes, yeah, sisters and brothers, there are, there are folk that hadn't gone the places I've gone. Mm -hmm. Yet God has taken them to the other side. Right. There are folk who hadn't said the things mm -hmm. that I've said and, and mistreated folk the way I mistreated. Yet God allows my days to roll on just a little bit further. I don't know, sisters and brothers, about you, but I quit ask the, asking the question, why did that happen to that sister? Why did that happen to that brother? No, sisters and brothers, when, when it gets down to me and the law, it's always this statement that it should have been me. I don't know about you this morning, sisters and brothers, but it should have been me on that sick bed. Yeah. It should have been me right now looking for something to drive. It, it should be me that's looking for somewhere to live. It should be me that's looking for a doctor that's never lost a case. It should be me that's looking for an attorney that's super bad in a courtroom. But no, God is smiling on me. Uh, yes, God is uh, blessing me. God is lifting me. And, and I don't know about you, but I give him all the glory. And I give him all the praise. I thank God for everything that he's done for me. And I know for myself uh, yeah, that it should have been me uh -huh, on my sick bed. It should have been me uh, that's looking for resources. Uh, it should have been me uh, that the deaf angel uh, uh -huh, should have called me by now. Uh, but God is so good. Uh, that he loves me enough uh, that despite my failures uh, and despite my faults uh, he keeps smiling on me uh, is the Lord uh, smiling on you is the Lord uh, is he blessing you uh, 
Well, the first thing you need to do is not take God for granted. You got to tell God, God, there ain't nothing about me. There ain't nothing special about me. But I'm so glad that you love me enough to touch me this morning and wake me up and start me on my way. He loves me enough and I thank him. Do you thank him? I thank the Lord for everything that he done for me. Yeah. Sister brothers in. Should have been me that is going through. Not only should be me, it should be you. Because if you are honest, there's nothing that stands out about us that makes us more attractive above anybody else to God. What is it? It's His grace that blesses us in spite of who and what we are. Should have been, should have been me, sisters and brothers. It should have been you. That car wreck should have been you. Huh? When everybody around you was getting displaced because they were making decisions on your job, but God kept you. Uh, God blessed you. Everybody got touched but you. Huh? Nothing special about you. Nothing special about me. But he blesses us in spite of it all. And so God, God wants us to know this morning, sisters and brothers, that he gives us difficult moments in order that we might practice self-evaluation. Nothing wrong with a man being sure of his spirituality. I, I believe once we're saved, we're saved forever. There's nothing wrong with going back and reevaluating your spirituality. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people so we can stop and see where we are? And maybe, maybe it's sometimes for us to say thank you. But we hadn't said thank you in a while. Maybe, maybe it's for us to stop and give praise, give worship, because we hadn't done it in a while. The reason why God was allowing death to pass over us every day so we can see his glory and we can magnify his name in all of the earth. So what do I do, preacher? How do I respond? Well, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you need to come and give your life to him. Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe within thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Not only do we offer salvation, but we also offer church membership. God wants us to grow spiritually in order that we might be conformed to his glory. In order that we might develop the mind of Christ, we ought to be up under systematic study of his word that we might grow in him. If you don't have church home today, paradise is the place to be. Pastor the Legion, people will love you when we engage in the business of growing the kingdom of God. If that is you, come now and unite with this church. In a moment, a phone number is going to scroll, and that'll be your opportunity to make contact with the church if you so desire. And then finally, those of you who need prayer, those of you who want to invite God into your situation, God says, come, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Where is rest? Rest is in him, finding our comfort in him and in him alone. So if you find yourself in one of those three categories, if you need salvation, if you need a church home, or if you just need prayer, doors of the church are open, Next boss you will hear will be that of uh, 